Star Space Station ESS-3, a special unit of the Earth Defense Force, is patrolling in outer space. The station's duties include the development of a new space technology and the defense of Earth from aggressive planets, as well as the constant observation of Earth for trouble spots on Earth itself. I finished the observation of the Earth data. Thank you, Chief Harris. What do you make of it? There's no change, sir. All's quiet on Earth. It's pretty boring for us, but I think everybody else should be happy enough. Good. I can just imagine the smiles of the people on Earth. Tell me, do you miss Earth, Chief Harris? No, not too much. Ah! Hey, look at that! What's happening on Earth? I don't know. It's I don't incredible. Understand. This. Somebody find out what's on? going on. This is ESS-3 station to Earth. Come in, please. What's happening? Come in, please. This is very strange. I've never seen anything like it before. Suddenly, the Earth sky mysteriously begins to brighten. Each zone of the Earth Defense Organization is trying to explain the cause of this sudden, mysterious glow in the upper atmosphere. The sky continues inexplicably to brighten, while mysterious letters suddenly appear in the stratosphere. The computer examines these strange letters, but cannot decipher them, for they belong to none of the known languages. Due to these ominous events, the Earth Defense Force is assembling new teams for the defense of each zone, made up of soldiers and scientists, to be called the Emergency Science and Defense Squads. Captain Adams has been chosen as the commander of the Eastern Defense Squad. It's good to see you again, Captain Adams. Good to see you, sir. We've chosen you to lead the Far East Defense Squad. We hope you'll accept. Yes, Commander, I will accept, but only under certain conditions. Hmm. What conditions? I choose the team. Anything else? One thing. What's that? I want that ship. Huh? Well, you know this is our newest and most powerful rocket ship. It's been especially assigned to me. I know, Commander, but we'll need it for this job. Hmm. You drive a hard bargain, Adams, but I agree. Thank you, Commander. I'm sure we'll get the job done. Oh, uh, Captain? Yes, Marconi? What is it? I have urgent business. Could you allow me to join your squad, Captain Adams? Not now, Marconi. Uh, please, I'd, I'd really like to join, Captain. Honest. I will announce the members of my squad later. Oh, uh, uh wait, wait a minute, Captain. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Captain Adams, I know you want the very best people for your team. All right, I'm probably not the best you could get, but I know I could be of some service. As I look at it, there's going to be some terrible things happening on Earth, and I know that I can... Straighten that uniform, Marconi. Huh? Hmm? Oh, I'd really like to join your squad, Captain. Get yourself measured for a new uniform and meet me on the platform at 0800. I made it! Ha-ha! <laughs> hmm? Oh, hmm, hmm. The Superstar needs a captain like you. You're the designer of the Superstar, is that right? That's right, sir. As you know, the Superstar can swim as well as she can fly. Mm-hmm. The Superstar is like my very own flesh and blood. She's been attached to the Emergency Science and Defense Squad. When do I have a fitting for my new uniform, Captain? You too? <laughs> The headquarters of the Emergency Science and Defense Squad for the Far East Zone is located in the top floor of the same building that houses the Earth Defense Organization. Hi, Anne. Welcome aboard. This is Lieutenant Ann Johnson. Meet Lieutenant Marconi. Hello, Lieutenant. I'm glad to meet you. Hmm? Uh, how do you do, Lieutenant Johnson? Hey, uh, please sit down, won't you? Thank you, but... Don't give me any special treatment just because I'm a woman. I'm going to work with you. I will handle my job just as well as anyone else. 
Oh. Be careful. She's a strong-minded woman. Oh. Well, I won't oh. be making the coffee. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, how is it that you know her, huh? Tell me that. We've talked a lot about this strange mystery. She's very bright and she's interested in this project. Ah, I see. So that's why Captain Adams chose her for this project. Anyway, she's done a lot of special medical research. That's great! I think that the bright light and these mysterious letters are the sign of something worse to come to Earth. Yes, I think you're right. Strange things are happening. I am PDQ. I'm from headquarters. I'm here to help you. Hello! I was especially chosen for the job. PDQ, leading robot of the Earth Defense Force. He's special. I am confident that we can work well together. The Army has nearly a hundred robots in all. One more to go. The member of the team they're waiting for is Harris. He is preparing to leave the space station for Earth. Harris, Captain Adams is hard on his squad. Yes, I know, but I'm prepared for that. I'll be in your neighborhood. Is there anything you'd like to have me tell your mother when I see her? Just tell her that I'm well and happy and that I miss her. And give my regards to my sister Dorothy if you see her. Who are you? Please, sir. I am Ultraman. Ultraman? Our Federation tried to warn you that the Earth is in great danger. That bright light surrounding Earth was a warning. Then our second warning were the letters appearing in Earth's sky. This was why you organized the Emergency Science and Defense Squad. Now I must go to Earth to warn your people, but I must use your body in order to do so. What? Why do you want my body? That is the only way that I can exist on your Earth. The survival of the whole universe, including Earth, depends on this. Must have been daydreaming. It must have been a dream. Giant prehistoric monsters have awakened in different parts of the Earth. Ultraman has tried to warn Earth of the dangers from these creatures who will attack people, cities, and towns. So how are things on Earth? Everything seems fine. Well, don't expect everything to stay fine. So, how are things at Earth Space Station 3? Well, a very strange thing happened to me on the way back to Earth. What? Huh? I'm not sure. Maybe I was dreaming. Hey, come on, pull yourself together, huh? I use the 
Defense Squad, stand by. Science Defense Squad, stand by. Is it happening again? Yours? No. Is it yours? No, that's woman stuff. I don't have things like that. What do you think I am, a sissy? Well, then it must be yours. I didn't know you dressed so well. Let's get moving. Come on. A giant iceberg is moving northwards from the Antarctic, and the Emergency Science and Defense Squad prepares to zero in on it. PDQ, the recorder. Okay, we just got this message from the Australian Defense Zone. Good gosh, what a huge iceberg. What's it doing here? PDQ, position reading. 803 degrees. All right, take off. thaw when it passed the equator. It doesn't make any sense. That's really strange. Captain, sir, I can't understand why the iceberg didn't thaw when it passed the equator. That's what we have to find out. Marconi and Harris, you make a landing on the iceberg in a landing craft and collect some samples of that ice. Roger. Roger. It's so cold. This isn't the Antarctic. I don't believe it. <laughs> it's minus 12 degrees and almost spring. Oh, but it's so cold. Let's get moving. <laughs> Be sure to get samples from below the surface. <laughs> oh, 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 the ice is moving. Oh, oh. Hang on, Marconi. I've got you. Oh, oh, oh. oh. of the monster. Go away, monk. I am very busy now. Captain, the monster's heading for the coast. We must stop the monster before he reaches land. We must move fast. Prepare the missile blast. Roger. He's tough. We'd better try the laser barrier. Barrier. What can we do? He's tougher than we thought. We 
You can't let the monster reach land. If he does, we're in big trouble. Look, his breath is frozen. I see. So that's why the iceberg didn't thaw at the equator. The monster was able to keep the iceberg frozen from the inside. We must stop him somehow. He's approaching the city. I'll try to get close enough by mini rocket for a laser attack. Roger. I'll take mini number oh. one. We must stop him. If we don't, he'll destroy the city. Harris, back off. You're too close. Harris, be careful. beam flasher. Place the beam flasher on your forehead. Ultraman's energy is quickly exhausted. He is growing weaker and weaker. As his energy decreases, Ultraman's color timer changes from blue to yellow to red. When the red phase begins, the color flashes on and off for 30 seconds. This means that time is running out. It's now or never. It could mean death. <laughs>
I did take over your body. But this must remain our secret. But why me, Ultraman? Why choose my body? One day, you will understand why, Eretz. He's really an amazing man, isn't he? Yes, and nice, too. I wonder what he's really like, Captain. Mm. I don't know, but I'm glad he's on our side. I'm sure he's a friend trying to help Earth. What do you think he is, Harris? Uh, uh well... Let me run the tape. I have analyzed him. His name is Ultraman. Ultraman? 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 Mm, Ultraman. Yes, Captain, that beam of light and letters in the sky. It came from Ultraman, as a message. Hmm, so that came from Ultraman. Ultraman. Harris can hardly believe what has happened to him. As the twilight turns to night, the first star of the evening glows hopefully and Harris is filled with a fresh determination to search for peace. I wonder what our new orders will be. Earth is running short of energy. A major development for electrical power is underway to harness and utilize this natural resource. This new power plant will harness the energy of this huge whirlpool. The whirlpool is already generating the electricity. Wow, look, there's another whirlpool. What's that? It looks like a tornado. A tornado? What? Run! Look, it's heading this Let's way. Get out of here. Let's run, run. I can't understand it. The weather was fine at the time. What's the possibility of a tornado happening under those conditions? Not much. You think the tornado's an unnatural disaster? Well, I'm ordering you to investigate the mystery. Right. I'll start immediately. Take as long as you need to find out what it is. Harris will work with you. Harris, you're in charge. Yes, but, well, I... What is it? Oh, nothing, Captain. It's nothing serious. Then get going. Yes, yes sir. sir. Harris, what was it that you were going to say in there? I was going to say not to send you, because if I remember correctly, your birthday's coming up tomorrow, isn't it? Thank you, that's right. You remembered my birthday, Harris. That's so sweet. I think they're really worried about these tornadoes. Mm, it can't be helped. We've got lots to do. I'll get everything ready. Mm-hmm. Bye now. See you later. Glenn, today's the day. Huh? Uh, Glenn? Hmm. Uh, Glenn? Where are you? Hmm. Uh, what's going on here, huh? Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> I'm here. You're teasing. Don't frighten me like that. When are you going to keep your promise for Anne's birthday? I've already kept my promise. Oh, really? Wow, that's very nice. It's an easy job for me. You see, I'm a master mechanic. Thank you very much. I wonder what she'll say to me when she sees it, huh? Hey, Marconi, I made that pendant. But I asked you to make the pendant. So I'll be the one to give it to her. Ha <laughs> ha. 
I wonder what she'll say to me. Probably, oh, you're so very kind. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What a pity. Huh? So he doesn't know at all. <laughs> Either he's good natured or he is an idiot. <laughs> hey, PDQ, what is it that you're trying to say to me? Hmm? Come on, spill it, huh? Lieutenant Anne is leaving now. And she's going to be going with Harris. What are you saying? They are both very happy. Their world is especially made for them. Uh, Harris is tricky. He's trying to pull a fast one. Uh. Who's there? Huh? What's going on here? Come on, you guys, open the door. Day, isn't it? But I cannot believe that a tornado is on its way here. What do you think about it, Harris? <laughs> huh? Oh, Marconi! Harris suddenly got sick. A stomach ache, I think. So I'll be taking his place today. Really? That's right. Hey, you're not disappointed that I'm here and not him, are you? Not really. I'm just surprised he didn't look sick. Yes, I know. I'm afraid he let you down. He's not very reliable. But, but I'm not like that. You can rely on me, Anne. That's strange. It doesn't show any magnetic reaction. generator burnt out, like something soaked up all the electricity. Uh, Lieutenant Ann? Yes? Uh, I'd like to give you this. <laughs> oh. Uh, ha happy birthday, Lieutenant Ann. It's a day early, I'm afraid. Marconi, thank you. It's a very kind thought, but I can't accept it. I would like it tomorrow. Huh? What? Don't forget, please save it for me, because we're working now. Uh, you don't like my present? It's for you, you know. Marconi. Uh... Oh, all right. Uh, if you don't like it, just forget it. This is Harris. Harris. Hmm. He doesn't waste any time, does he? The tornado has turned up again, and it's heading toward the Central Alps power station. Hurry up and get ready. Roger. All right, let's go. It's a tornado. It's just a tornado. Oh, no. I think the tornado is attacking the power station because it needs to renew its electrical energy. Look. 
That tornado is alive. Okay, so we'll stop it. Wait, Marconi. Hey, come back. Follow me, Harris. I'm gonna have a crack at it. Whoa! Stop. Our orders are only to investigate the tornado. That's what I'm doing, investigating. The ship! I can't control it! Marconi! Let's help him! Captain Adams, I take complete responsibility. Don't blame yourself. The most important thing for us to do now is to find out the power source of that tornado so we can stop it. That's the only way we can rescue Lieutenant Johnson. Is she gonna be all right? Don't know yet. We're gonna have to find some way to communicate with her somehow. I can't figure out what conditions would make possible a sudden outbreak of tornadoes, especially in an area of stability like this one. But they use a lot of energy, so we can set a trap. A trap? If we use the electrical energy of the power station as bait, the thing will head directly for it to replenish its own supply. Are you sure? If you're wrong, we're all gonna be blown up. You're right. It is risky. But it's the only way that we can maneuver it into position long enough to rescue Lieutenant Johnson. All right, I'm ready to go. Even though it is a dangerous plan, it's better than sitting around and doing nothing. We have to move fast. Okay, try it. Chief, did you get that on the intercom? All right, put Glenn's plan into operation. Full power. That's it, Captain. She's at full power now. The base is combat ready to engage the tornado creatures. The tornado monster approaches precisely as planned. But where is Lieutenant Anne? What's it waiting for? The tornado is approaching. Battle stations. Battle stations. Glenn, Harris, now's the time. I'm fine, Captain. Let me help. All right. You too, Marconi. Let's go, you guys. Roger.
They're blowing the missiles off course. They're having no effect at all. We've got to get inside that thing and find out where it's getting all that power. I'll take the mini rocket. It's heading for the powerhouse. I have to do it. Even if I can't win, I must. Is Anne wearing the pendant you gave her? Hmm? The pendant? What difference does that make, Glenn? Let me think. I don't remember. If she has it on, we have a way to find her even if we can't see her. What do you mean? Listen, I hid a mini flare inside that pendant that I made for her. If we could communicate with her, she could show us her location. Huh? Now I get it. We'll be able to see it from out here. But she doesn't know it's well, in there. We've got to find a way to get through to her. I'm glad you agree, Marconi. Do you have any suggestions? Marconi! Marconi! It's time for Ultraman. Look, it's Ultraman. You've got to listen to me. Wake up. Uh, are you wearing the pendant that I gave you? The pendant? <laughs> listen, Anne. There's a button on the pendant. Press it quickly. There's the flare. As you recall, Ultraman's energy is quickly exhausted on Earth. 
As his energy decreases, once again, Ultraman's color timer changes from blue to yellow and finally to red, which means that he is in great danger. Affirmative, affirmative. He has won. I knew he would. <laughs> hmm, who is this Ultraman? He's incredibly powerful. We must learn more about him. Happy birthday. For you, Anne. Uh, I brought you something. Thank you, everybody. I certainly didn't expect to have a party. Thanks again. This will liven things up. Great Scott, where did you get that? The sergeant who runs the canteen is a friend of mine. That's great, Marconi. Here we are. There. Now, what do you say we have some fun? After that daring rescue, we deserve it. <laughs> Marconi, stop boasting. Uh -huh. Ultraman rescued all of us. Without mm -hmm. him, none of us would be here, and you know it. Uh, I know that. I'm no dummy. <laughs> By the way, where's the captain? What's he doing now? I don't know. All he ever thinks about is the ship. Hmm, come to think of it, I've never seen him celebrate anything. Oh, it is heavy. Uh, uh. But you look at the size of that cake. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Have a happy birthday, Anne, from your friend, Captain Adams. Wow. Oh, Captain. Hey, wow. what do you think of that? I propose a toast to Captain Adams. Captain Adams is happy that his young crew members are enjoying themselves, for he knows that they will face great danger in times to come, and that their good feelings for one another will help them face it together as a team. But he is still troubled by the strange menace of the tornado monster. Where did it come from? Could such a thing happen again? And what about Ultraman? Who is he? And why is he using his superhuman powers for those on Earth? The only thing of which the captain is certain is his determination to maintain peace on Earth and keep it safe from its enemies. The answers to the other questions will have to remain a mystery for now. All is peaceful on Earth. During this quiet period, the members of the Eastern Defense Squad are able to relax and enjoy their first holiday in a long time. Lieutenant Marconi is crazy about mini train models. Glenn has devoted himself to mechanical machines, which occupy almost all of the space in this room. Meanwhile, Harris and Lieutenant Ann Johnson are enjoying a day near the lake. The clouds are beautiful. Unfortunately, this holiday will be... SDF headquarters, SDF headquarters, emergency scramble. Get in, let's go. Okay. Uh, hello, Harris. Johnson? Hello, Captain Adams. What's happening here? Don't you know? No. Now, don't tell me it's another tornado monster. Not this time. It's just a big red cloud. It showed up on our long-range scanners a little while ago. It's a very strange formation indeed. Do we know anything else? 
Well, it seems to be moving into the direction of our base, Harris. No more holiday. That cloud is going to bring us trouble. I'm late. Uh, uh, oh, uh, 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 uh. All right, let's get going. Yes, yes sir. sir. Prepare to load all the equipment and the SS-13. Be ready to leave in 15 minutes. We depart at 0900. It's strange, they seem to be trying to escape. We need more altitude to get over these birds. Roger. Oh. Captain, up ahead, the red cloud. Yes, I see it. Is everybody ready? This is it. Gosh, Captain, the sun looks blue. Captain, a commercial jet is heading directly for the red cloud. We've got to do something about that cloud, and quickly, too. Captain, equipment number 16's inert frozen gas is available. All right, Glenn, prepare the equipment. It's still a cloud, but the inert gas will turn the vapor into rain. That's one of the ways that they seed clouds to make it rain, so we're going to do the same thing. Fire the inert gas missiles. What was that? It looks like it's something more than just a cloud. Captain, that jetliner's getting too close to the cloud. Warn them to change course. Roger. This is Superstar of Eastern Defense Squad calling Jumbo Jetliner. Jetliner, come in, come in. Over. This is Superstar. Superstar, Superstar, this is flight number S1400 of Atlas Air. Over. Jetliner, keep away from the red cloud drifting in front of you. Over. Roger. Thanks for the warning, Superstar. Prepare to fire missiles, Harris. Yes, sir. Let's see if that red cloud can take this. Firing missiles. Oh. Oh. The cloud seems to be alive. Wait a minute. What do you mean the cloud is alive? How can that be? Captain, why not collect some samples of the red cloud and analyze it? Good idea. Marconi, see to it. Right, right away, sir. Captain, I'll take this sample into the lab for analysis. I'll leave it to you, Glenn. We'll take care of the cloud. Harris, take over the controls.
A cloud should turn into rain as the temperature drops. The frozen gas from the missiles should have done the job. But the red cloud hasn't changed at all. It doesn't make any sense. Captain Adams, maybe hot air will do it. Why don't we give it a real blast and see what happens? All right, Harris, let's give it a try. Now let's blast into the whirl and scatter it. Success! Success! We did it! Ha ha! Huh? Look at the cloud, it's changing. Huh? Captain! Oh. Oh, my gosh. Hmm? Look there. Hi, Glenn. Need something analyzed today? Yes. Have this air sample analyzed immediately. Captain Adams. Captain Adams. PDQ speaking. Come in, please. Here. Glenn is in the laboratory at present, sir. He has just begun the analysis of the cloud sample. Tell him to hurry. We're running out of time. Roger, I will do that. <laughs> Captain, the weather section says that we can expect heavy rain very soon. Should rain soon. Captain, when the red cloud gets cold, what do you think we should do then? Uh, it sure is strange. I wonder what that cloud's going to do now. Harris, where are we, roughly? We'll be over the Alps in a few minutes. How come the red cloud brought us this far off course? This cloud is really strange. It's different from other clouds. Captain, the rain cloud is here. It's something other than gas? That's difficult to believe. What? It can't be. The cloud is alive. You mean this thing is alive? Yes, but I can't believe it. It's going to rain here soon. Okay, let's see how it reacts to rain. All right. Whoa! Captain Adams, the red cloud is congealing into a solid mass. become some sort of strange creature. Captain, the water has turned the red gas into a monster. It's getting more active. I don't understand it. I know. I 
I've never seen such violence. Awful. Captain, when water is added, the monster rages violently in its container, as if it were struggling for its very life. We can tell it seems to be in terrible pain. Captain, he's tearing the mountain apart. We better attack that monster right now. Roger. Roger. Get him away from that dam. It'll be a disaster if it collapses. We must keep it away from the dam. Gotcha. Captain, it stopped raining. Good. I hope the monster gets weaker soon. What's going on? is much stronger than we thought. It seems indestructible. There must be some way to beat it. Captain, we've just made a startling discovery. Heat seems to calm the monster down and change it back into a gas. Whatever you do, keep that monster away from water. I repeat, keep that monster away from water. Thanks, Glenn. That's important information. We must keep the monster away from the dam. Marconi, Marconi, are you all right? Come in, please respond, come in. Marconi, can Marconi. you hear us? Marconi, are you all right? If you can hear me, please respond. Oh, 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 ow. Harris, I'm all right, but there's no time to waste. We've got to protect that dam now. Roger. Harris, if the monster manages to break down the dam, there'll be terrible flooding. Oh, no! The dam's breaking! Yeah. <laughs> 
stop him! Got to reach the beam flasher! The danger is over and Ultraman has beaten him. Yes, it's over. The monster is at peace now. The heat transformed it back into a gas. It has been liberated from its hellish agony by Ultraman. It has now returned to the tranquility of outer space. You know something, Harris? That red clad really had me worried for a while. Yes, we're lucky that Ultraman was able to turn it back into a harmless gas, Anne. It's hard to believe. It was dangerous a short time ago, and now it's floating in space just like any other cloud. It's unbelievable to me that a cloud could change into a living thing. I guess it's just one of nature's mysteries. I'm sure that in the future we'll find that outer space holds uncountable creatures that seem awfully strange to us. Hello, Eastern Defense Squad headquarters. What? What did you say? Put them through. Hello, what's the problem over there? What? Not another red cloud? Well, I'm glad to hear that. What's that you say? A what? A monstrous crocodile. Oh, no! Uh... Friends share their laughter as they have shared the responsibility of facing danger. Once again, their determination to maintain peace on Earth has won the day. With the help of Ultraman, who knows that they will need all their strength to defeat the enemies of Earth. In fact, the very next day, it becomes evident that the Eastern Defense Squad isn't going to get much rest at all. Take shelter! Hurry! Take shelter! Shoot, shoot, keep the 
monster from the center of town. Stop it! Stop it! The missiles are having no effect from this range. So what do you think I should do? Get closer. In order to pierce this monster's armor, you've got to fire from close range. But that's impossible. I know it'll work. I'll do it myself. Marconi! Marconi! Come back here, you fool! That impulsive idiot, he'll be killed! Commander, cease firing! But... but... When Marconi makes up his mind, nothing can stop him. He doesn't stand a chance. Now you, here! Stopped him all right. Ha <laughs> ha. Meanwhile, Harris and Lieutenant Ann Johnson are attending a preliminary meeting at the headquarters of the Earth Defense Force, deciding what to do about the crocodile. Captain, can we help? No, the monster is dead. Captain, I hope it didn't do too much damage. How was it killed, Captain Adams? Did we use the laser batteries or the missiles? No, Marconi killed it by himself. What? what? Too bad you missed it. Marconi put on quite a show out there. It was a heck of a fight. Captain, Marconi, it's over. I'm checking the damage. I should be back soon. All right, good job. Thanks, Captain. Captain Adams, where do you think that the monster could have come from? We're still trying to find out. Maybe somewhere in the Antarctic. Huh? But how did it get here? It seems to be a prehistoric animal that was awakened by underground volcanic activity. I suppose that's possible. Wherever it came from, it's all over now. It seems to be. If I had arrived earlier, I could have stopped the monster before he'd done so much damage to the city. Oh, I've heard all about it. Enough already. Are you jealous? You must hmm? be joking. Now what? What? Hmm. They've moved in cranes to take the monster away. I wonder what they'll do with him. The chief of the Space Biology Study Group is taking command of the monster for disposal. Now, why would he be doing that? I don't know. That monster isn't their responsibility. It's ours. Hey, Marconi, wait! Right. Be careful, boys. Hi, Marconi. What are you guys butting in for? We'll take care of moving this monster's body. We need to study this monster while it's still alive. Well, what do you mean by that? I thought I killed him. Well, look. Incredible, he's still alive? Yes, its cells are still active. It's a strong creature and very strange. I've never seen anything like it before. You want me to kill him again? No, it's vital that we study this monster very carefully. I'm extremely concerned. Such active cells indicate that the monster may be capable of regenerating itself. Hmm. Chief, do you mean that other monsters could grow from parts of this terrible animal? I can't say for sure. We'll have to wait until we've completed all of our tests. <sighs> we could end up battling a whole army of those monsters. We'd never be rid of them. Boy, 
Are you sure of that report, officer? A baby monster here? That's what they say. I received a call from the defense squad this morning asking that we all keep a lookout for such a creature. It seems strange. Anyway, if you see an unusual animal, call me right away and I'll come running. That's my job. Yes, sir, and I'll ask my son to keep watch, too. Good day. Huh? Oh. Oh. Mm, oh. You know, you do look strange, but you aren't a monster, are you? You're too cute to be. I'll just have to hide you. Oh, Timmy! Huh? Oh. Oh. Coming, Mom. You'll be safe in here. Um. I'll be back in just a little while, so you be good. Quiet, I can't sleep. What's the matter with you? Well, I can't sleep either. I want to know what happened with the monster. The chief said he'd inform us just as soon as he finished doing the necessary tests. I called him up half a dozen times, and each time he said he hadn't finished his examinations yet. The both of you are worrying too much about that monster. Yes, they are, but it's only because they don't know what it is, and it could be important to the safety of the people. But shouldn't you try to get some rest, my friend? All right, I'll try. Don't pay any attention to me. I'll just go to bed, okay? Humph. <laughs> Hello, Marconi here. Is that you, Chief? Have you got the test results? You have? What are they? The results are not good. How so, huh? What did the tests tell you? I examined one of the cells of the monster. I found that it has an amazing ability to grow. I can tell you more after 24 hours. If the cell is still alive, it will grow into a huge monster by this afternoon. This afternoon? Are you sure? That's what I said. Uh, hey, what's your hurry, Marconi? This is Captain Adams. Could you put me through to the chief of the space biology group? Yes, sir. I just know there's going to be some trouble if the chief's test results are correct. Captain, where's Marconi? The chief of the space biology group told Marconi an interesting theory about the animal. Is that what made him take off so suddenly? Yes, they told him that any cell from that animal's body could regenerate into another monster. I think he's right. We'd better go after him. If one of those cells develops into a monster, it'll be all my fault. Marconi! Marconi! Huh? Keep cool. We're on our way. Several parties are being sent to search the area. Roger. Milk, don't you, little fella? You've grown a lot since last night. You're getting bigger. Oh, now you be good. And I'll be back after school. Ow. Captain Adams and the defense squad follow Marconi to the ruined city in case more monsters appear. Everything seems quiet in the city at the moment, sir. All right, I want Marconi to search around the shore area while you search in the mountain area. Roger. Hmm. 24 hours. Time's almost up.
A strange animal? How big is it? Uh, I don't know about its size, but it's a very strange-looking animal. Oh, yes. I remember oh. our friend Timmy had a strange animal. When did you see it? After school last night. And you say his name is Timmy? Do you know where I can find him? Look! Here comes Timmy right now! Huh? Thank you very much. Timmy! Uh, I'm glad I caught up to you. You are Timmy, aren't you? Uh -huh. I was wondering if I could have a look at that little animal you showed your friends after school last night. Are you a police officer? No, I'm not. It's just that strange animal life is a hobby of mine. What do you mean, strange animal? He's just a tiny baby, that's all. Exactly. And little babies can catch colds very easy. Better let me take a look at him. But he's fine. Best not to take any chances. I don't know. Can you keep a secret? Yes. Are you sure you can keep a secret? I promise. Let's shake on it. Hmm. I hid it in a secret place. Come with me. It's over this way. Baby! Huh? Where are you? Is that baby? Since last night, he couldn't sleep, so I played a tune for him. Timmy, do you think it would be all right if I helped you take care of your pet? No, he belongs to me. Nobody else has a pet like this one. And I'll be able to take him around after he grows up. Listen to me, Timmy. What if he grew up and suddenly turned into something that was mean and horrible? You mean become a monster? That's exactly what I mean, Timmy. He looks like a cute little baby now, but when he grows up, he could hurt a lot of people. No, baby wouldn't hurt anybody at all. Now listen to me, Timmy. A friend of mine had a pet, a baby bear, a long time ago. But when the bear grew up, something terrible happened. It attacked his friends and neighbors. Do you want that to happen? But I'm sure baby would never do that. Listen to me. Huh? Baby animals are cute, but what's going to happen when he grows up? Once he reaches full size, you won't be able to control him, and it'll be your responsibility if anyone gets hurt. Stop, Timmy. I don't believe you. You just want to take my pet away from me. Oh. Captain Adams, Marconi here. Come in, please. Come in, please. Report, Marconi. Baby monster. It's being kept as a pet by a little boy who won't give it up. All right, we'll come at once. Should I wait for you, or should I go after the boy? The most important thing is to keep track of the animal's whereabouts. Follow the boy, and we'll be there as soon as we can. Hey, build a house for Baby. That's a great idea. Sure. Let's go into town, and we'll buy all the materials we're going to need to build it. Okay. I'll be back soon, Baby. Come on. What are we waiting for? What? Oh, oh yeah, sure. But look, Timmy, I... Hey, look, the lumber yard is right over here. Oh, huh? Oh! It's the same as the monster we saw yesterday. Only 20 minutes have passed since Marconi told us it was still a baby, but look at it now. It must be destroyed. Let me blast him. I'll blow him to pieces. Glenn, if you blast it, you'll scatter its cells and just make more of them. That's right. Uh, try the tranquilizer gun. Glenn, I want you to take the Superstar and observe. If we can't knock it out with the tranquilizer gun, we'll be forced to use the firebombs. That's the only way we can be sure of destroying all of its cells. Roger. Have you decided on what you want? No, I can't find suitable wood. You remember the defense squad, aren't you? 
That's right, I am, Timmy. Now I know why you wanted Baby. You betrayed me. You broke your promise. I had to report to the captain. Your pet is going to put hundreds of people in danger. You still lie to me. Timmy, I'm it's too so dangerous. Baby. Firebombs aren't working. If it has a weakness, we haven't found it yet. We must find a way to destroy it. Time for Ultraman. turned into a monster after all. No, that's not my pet. Yes, it is. It's not. Look at that animal carefully, Timmy. That monster used to be your pet. Oh, no, it's not, baby. It can't be. You've got to understand, Timmy. All animals are cute and lovable when they're small, but that doesn't mean they'll stay that way. Look and see for yourself. Turn around and see what your pet has become. You're just lucky that Ultraman is here to fight this monster. If he weren't here, a lot of innocent people could lose their lives. Uh -oh. Ultraman finishes off one monster, but another one takes its place. I wonder how many he'll have to fight. Marconi. It's the captain. Timmy! Marconi, Ultraman's life is in danger. Do you know if the monster has any weak points? Weak points? Ultraman's energy is quickly exhausted on Earth. Ultraman seems to be in pain, and his flasher is changing from blue to yellow. Aha! Oh, I think the monster's weak point is the salt water. Captain, I think I've got it. Ultraman, try to get the monsters into the sea. They are weakened by the salt water. like I was right. Timmy.
All right. Uh, goodbye, baby. <laughs> it's over now, Timmy. The members of the Eastern Defense Squad are thankful that Ultraman has once again helped them fulfill their mission. Though they know they must keep a constant vigil, for now we leave our friends as they enjoy the tranquility of the sunset. Once again, there is peace on Earth, and the enemies of humankind have been defeated. <laughs>